A lot of people, similar to me, have guilty pleasures that come from the macabre. Something that can be hit or miss when it comes to scaring people, though, is the Mandela Effect. Throughout this episode, I'm going to take you on a journey from past to present day and share how the Mandela Effect came to be. I'll also be talking about the human memory and giving plenty of examples of this phenomenon. Join me in uncovering the history of the Mandela Effect conspiracy theory. This is Mental History. Thanks for listening. So what exactly is the Mandela Effect? For those of you who are unfamiliar, here's a quick rundown before we get started. This phenomenon is a conspiracy theory that pertains to universe hopping or dimension switching. If you've heard of glitches in the matrix, the Mandela Effect is similar. Essentially, a Mandela Effect occurs when a group of people remember something that did not happen or happened differently than they remember. This type of group consciousness and false memory tie into the inner workings of the human brain, but also have numerous other influences on people remembering certain things, names, or circumstances. The name of this conspiracy theory comes from Nelson Mandela, who was a South African human rights activist and president. When he passed away on December 5, 2013, there were numerous reports of people being confused, they could have sworn that he died while he was in prison in the 1980s. People claim to remember news reports, conversations, and other confirmations that Nelson Mandela did in fact pass away in the 1980s, not 2013. While this can be chalked up to false memory, so many individuals swore that they remembered this so clearly that there was only one explanation. They came from another universe. Somehow, this explanation is easier for people to digest than admitting they were misremembering something, and I don't blame them. I've been confused by examples of the Mandela Effect before, and for me, it all started with the Berenstain Bears. This isn't the first case of the Mandela Effect, hence the name, but this is the first case that I had heard of, and it's one of the most popular examples out there, and it's quite divisive as well. The Berenstain Bears book series was created by Jan and Stan Berenstain and was first published in 1962. The characters are Papa, Mama, Brother, Sister, and Honey, who is the youngest member of the Bear family. The series was met with impressive reception, selling over 240 million copies by 2003, 15 of which were recognized in the top 100 children's paperbacks. There was some criticism that the series was too hokey, but in December of 1979, the first Berenstain Bears television special, The Berenstain Bears Christmas Tree, aired on NBC. 1983 brought an Atari game, and the Bears were featured in a museum exhibit in 2002. A television show, more books, and more movies followed suit. But why are we talking about the history of the Berenstain Bears? A large group of people remember the author's last names and the subsequent characters to be pronounced Berenstein. This is easily explained by false memory or misspellings on knockoff products to capitalize on the bear's fame, but there's so many individuals who are certain they don't just think it's Berenstein, they remember. According to people who believe in this conspiracy theory, there must have been a parallel universe switch. The world where Berenstain was the correct spelling collided with the world where Berenstein was the correct spelling, or vice versa. Evidence of this switch, or as it's often referred to in the community, a flip-flop, include pieces of media where spelling Berenstein is present, and these are said to be remnants of other parallel universes in which these people came from. It's a lot to take in but the theory of endless parallel universes is explained as follows. The concept of parallel universes is an idea that arises from the multiverse theory, suggesting that our universe is one of many existing universes that, in a manner of speaking, lie parallel to each other. 
according to futurism, in layman's terms, for every choice you make, there is an alternate, yet parallel universe where you didn't make that choice. If you go right, a parallel universe says you go left. If you drop something and it breaks, parallel universe you dropped it and it didn't break, or another universe exists where you didn't drop it at all, and yet another universe exists where the object isn't there. As complex as this idea is, a lot of people subscribe to the idea that the parallel universe theory is true. The Mandela effect is just one symptom of universes colliding or crossing over. Here's a few of my personal favorite Mandela effects, and there are more examples linked in the show notes for you to enjoy. First up is Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. He has shaggy hair, a green shirt, brown pants, and a very distinct Adam's apple. But in every iteration and adaptation of Scooby-Doo, Shaggy does not have a visible Adam's apple unless he's swallowing. When he's standing and talking, it's not visible. Next, we can talk about Lamb Chop's play-along, which always ended with the same song, the song that never ends. That's what everyone remembers. The song and the lyrics actually state, this is the song that doesn't end. Never is never said. What's the order of the lights on a traffic light? Green, yellow, and red. It's actually reversed with red on the top, yellow in the middle, and green on the bottom. And last, but certainly not least, one of the most popular Mandela effects out there, the Fruit of the Loom logo does not, and never has had, a cornucopia, just the fruit by itself, despite what people remember. While these examples are fun to look at, it can be concerning to feel that you've fallen victim to false memory when something feels so distinctly true to your mind. After the break, we're going to dive into the psychology behind false memories, shared memory, and the Mandela Effect. I'm going to take a small break to talk about my newest venture, Darling Dream Collective. Darling Dream Collective is a supplier of office decor, accessories, and tools by professional women for professional women. The shop is open on Etsy and can be found through my website, creationsbyvi.com. Darling Dream Collective is helping me further my goal of helping women in the workplace and helping them be free to express themselves. To support the show, follow at Mental History Podcast on Instagram and check out my new book on Amazon Kindle. Now that we've gone over a few examples of the Mandela Effect, I'd love to hear some that you've experienced or didn't know about until you started research. False memories should be easy to disprove, right? Let's talk about why that's not always the case. False memories are a known phenomenon thanks to the way that humans' brains operate. When you have a memory, you're actually picturing the last time you remembered that memory. And as time goes on, memories become like a game of telephone, getting skewed slightly with each remembrance and molded by the stories surrounding them. That's not to say memory isn't reliable in some cases, but insignificant memories, like the name of a movie or children's book, may not take top priority over time. A source from Britannica states, At some point in their education, most Americans learned that Alexander Hamilton was a founding father, but not a U.S. president. However, when a study on false memory investigated whom most Americans identify as U.S. presidents, the subjects were more likely to incorrectly select Hamilton, but not several actual former presidents. This is likely to be because neurons encoding information about Hamilton were frequently activated at the same time as neurons encoding information about former presidents. Because neurons that fire together wire together, a connection between the past presidents and Hamilton could gradually become strong enough that you would incorrectly remember Hamilton as a former president himself. This is just one example of memories becoming mixed up with other events and even different memories when members of the study tried to recall former presidents and information about Alexander Hamilton at the same time. When it comes to the Mandela effect, these false memories are on a huge scale, 
at times hundreds or thousands of people from all different walks of life. Generalizations and assumptions can help fill in the gaps when we're trying to remember details, as our brains are also great at filling in blanks with pattern recognition. The internet is home to a lot of communities, many of which are to discuss glitches in the Matrix, the Mandela Effect, and other mysteries. Some posts on Reddit's r slash Mandela Effect throw around theories like timeline skipping, time traveling, and our life being a simulation that's controlled by some outside force. This forum also holds a goldmine of examples, discourse, and residue from previous parallel universes. It might seem easy to dismiss, but this community currently has its own wiki that's organized in alphabetical order and over 262,000 members at the time I'm recording this episode. A notable post from this page is by user Subject Jeweler, and this post is entitled, A Mandela Effect Was Documented in 1980, Decades Before the Term Existed. The following is a quote from that post. In 1980, a bomb stopped the Bologna station clock, which was repaired but broke 16 years later. For respect, it was left stopped. A study found most passing daily through the station believed it had been stopped all 16 years, including station staff themselves. The article linked is from AlternateMemories.com, which is another endless source in Mandela Effect cases, glitches, and of course, alternate memories. Here's a quote from the article. The background is that after the tragic atrocity of the Bologna Central Station bombing, the blast stopped the clock at 10.25 a.m. on August 2, 1980. Many photographs were taken of it at this moment and used as a symbol when reporting on the story. It was quickly repaired and worked normally from then on. However, it broke in 1996, and as an act of remembrance, its hands were set to 10.25 a.m. and it was not repaired. A team of Italian psychologists decided to study false memory phenomenon and found that most people thought the clock had been stopped for the entire 16 years since the explosion. This includes staff actually working at the station during this time, and many travelers would have seen and relied on it daily during this period. There was even a study published in 2009 stating that only 6 participants, or 11%, remember the correct story of the clock working after it was repaired. In 2023, we live in a world where misinformation moves faster than it ever has. Misinformation is a hot topic, whether on purpose or by ignorance, it's out there on pretty much every subject. Questioning reality isn't always a good time, but when you have a Mandela effect that personally affects you and your idea of reality, it can be jarring to say the least. Is it a case of false memory? Do alternate realities really exist? Are we constantly flip-flopping universes? We don't know yet, and that's what makes it a conspiracy. Thank you for listening. If you want to support the show, follow at Mental History Podcast on Instagram, visit my Etsy shop, and check out the new book linked in the notes. Thank you.